the latest on September 29th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. Hurricane Lorenzo has intensified again today, now a mid-range category 4. Potential tropical cyclone 16E in the eastern Pacific could become a name storm at any time. And Mitag near the Philippines headed off towards the northwest. September 29th, day 272, day 120 in the Atlantic this hurricane season. Lorenzo, a category 4 storm at this time. We'll check up on that in just a moment. PDC 16E is active at this point. National Hurricane Center update coming up pretty much when this tropical weather bulletin comes out. So they may or may not upgrade it when that comes out. And Mitag, just off the Philippines, signal one warnings in effect over there for the northernmost islands. No systems active in the southern hemisphere though, it's all quiet here. So the main feature tonight is Hurricane Lorenzo. We're giving it 140 miles per hour and a pressure of 946 millibars. This is potentially a conservative estimate based on latest satellite imagery, which is rather impressive, I must say. A ring of minus 75 and minus 80 degree cloud tops around it. 1343 miles from Flores in the Azores, 23.7 north, 44.7 west. Movement will be fairly slow throughout Sunday, that's probably when it's going to peak if it hasn't already. Monday is when it moves off towards the northeast, weakens gradually, but the Azores could still see Category 2 hurricane force winds midweek, particularly the further west islands. As an extra tropical cyclone, it's likely to move then towards Western Europe. Tropical storm Mitag currently has winds of 60 miles per hour and a pressure of 995. Located off the Philippines, uh, 335 miles from Basco on the Batanas Islands. 18.5 north at 126.7 degrees east at this time. And this storm is likely to develop into a typhoon over the next couple of days. Category 1 we're expecting tomorrow. Um, some models differing quite a bit. Some uh, projections taking it higher than the Category 2 that we're putting there in the East China Sea. It looks to me as though we're probably not going to see rapid intensification in this storm. Could be wrong on that. It is the Western Pacific. Anything could happen. Here is some imagery of Lorenzo then, and you can see how the wind shear has been lower today. That's probably the main reason why it's done so well, because everything else is in its favor. Sea surface temperatures warm, around 27 degrees, um, and relative humidity is high. Uh, wind shear will start to increase again fairly soon, looks, looks like it anyway, in the next 24 hours. So it's really got a small window now for further intensification, probably just the overnight hours tonight. Here's how it's looking right now then, uh, there it is, uh, night already has fallen, some time ago actually, and that's how the storm's been progressing, it's been moving just east of north in the latest frames, um, but the eye is starting to come out a little bit more, we just had a maximum eye temperature reading of plus one degrees Celsius, that's not particularly high, which is stunting its intensity estimate, the Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet. Eastern Pacific, you can see the potential tropical cyclone on the right hand side, very broad, and National Hurricane Center still not convinced, at least at the time of broadcast that it has a circulation. They also speculate that it could relocate closer to the coast and that would bring in a landfall much sooner as a tropical storm. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for the coast of Mexico. Central Pacific looking quiet, Western Pacific also quiet as far as uh, the Philippine Sea. And then of course you've got the unmistakable feature of tropical storm attack. Um, it's been looking fairly decent, southern side in particular, but not really seeing any rumblings of an eye just yet. Northern side a bit barren, and that is what's preventing it from reaching typhoon status just yet. The Australian South Pacific region, we have for the time being lost our um, animated imagery for these two sections, um, so we're going to have to fire another satellite person, uh, just like we did yesterday. The Indian Ocean looking like that as well, quite a lot of disturbances, disturbed weather over the Indian continent, and that disturbance over the Arabian Sea as well, probably not going to amount to much. Sea surface temperatures then looking like this, around 28 or 29 degrees generally in the eastern Pacific, where that system is, is 16E, pushing 30 degrees Celsius along the coast. Go for Mexico cooling just a little bit, only the southwest is remaining above 30 degrees. Caribbean though is very warm further west, and where Lorenzo is, temperatures around 27, 28 degrees as I said before. That will continue for a good day or two. The Indian Ocean, fairly warm, around 29, maybe pushing 30 degrees near the uh, Bangladeshi coast, and in the Western Pacific, 
Warming up a little bit in the Philippine Sea as well, so where that storm is right now, Mitag, temperatures around 28, maybe 29 degrees. It will not take as much advantage of those sea surface temperatures as it moves further north um, as previous storms did. Because the sea surface temperatures have dipped a little bit, they're struggling to recover from previous typhoons that have taken almost identical tracks. Um, it seems to be a very constant pattern at the moment that these storms are going to go and affect the Japanese southernmost islands and the East China Sea coasts. Hurricane Lorenzo looking like this, a close up on the GO-16 floater imagery. The eye was fairly clear throughout the course of those daylight images today um, and now we have entered nightfall. Um, unfortunately you can't see that on that imagery but pretty much remaining the same. Very easy on the eye for sure. <clears throat> So, the next name in the Atlantic will be Melissa in the Eastern Pacific. We're looking out for Nada. That will be 16E if it gets named. The Central Pacific's next name will be Ima. We've so far had 68 storms so far this year. The average per year is 91. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Hagibis. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's Kiar. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter if you want to get in touch on any of those outlets too. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description.